o pată la gun Că de arina o ai băi stăm chea See, you left your list before they always had to eat yourself on your heart. Six days here, they never turn back. But you, you remember me. What you are seeing is a spiritual ritual. Very real and very old in many different religions and customs. And to be honest, some of you or people you know have done this or continue to do this to this very day. As you watch this presentation, of course I want you to joyfully remember the events of what happened with our favorite characters on P-Valley Season 1 and 2, especially since all of us are now looking forward to Season 3. At the same time, I have to be that nagging big sister and point out things that some may have not noticed or understood. So this is my fan film to point out some things and stress that nothing I present is a judgment of any character, but rather the examination of the spiritual energies revolving around them. In between the actual show scenes, there will be informative commercial breaks. But first, I want you all to meet the characters. What's going on, P Valley friends? Welcome to R2 TV Neighborhood Watch. Today we are filming Pea Valley Season 2, but it's a witchcraft review, and we're going to be doing it here at our community exotic club here in Rebel City called Dreams and Nightmares. Now this video is not only for the family of the Pea Valley Series fan club, but rather more of a review as well as a cautionary presentation of how our own self-destruction is disguised as fun and friends. So let's get started. Darkness has descended upon the town of Chuckalisa, Mississippi. But nighttime darkness is not what I mean. I'm speaking of the kind of darkness that takes aim at you like an enemy, but can be disguised as a friend, family member, or who we lay next to. Whether you are just now a fan of the show or a day one watcher, I'm sure you have seen some obvious signs of unalive energy at the pink and how its reach is affecting the residents of Chuckalisa. So I'm going to briefly go over a few things from both seasons as we review the choices that affect the characters we love and the ones we love to hate. In season one, episode one's opening scene, we enter a town by way of an aerial drone that has been flooded by Hurricane Drake and the aftermath of that storm. As we tour the town with a bird's eye view, we see vehicles trapped in water, items such as a shoe, a baby doll. Eventually the camera pans and follows the suitcase as it leads up to a disheveled woman collecting the remnants of her belongings. She gathered what was salvageable and hopped on what I assume was a Greyhound bus. And after traveling for some time, and once it was dark, the bus pulled over so everyone could stretch their legs. Now, as a disheveled woman stood a slight distance from the bus smoking a cigarette, she noticed an alluring 
warm pink light in the night sky. When it was time to board the bus again, it appeared that the woman, like most of us, when survival is at the forefront, she knew it was a gift, some money quick, opportunities awaiting just beyond the horizon where the pink light was. So she opted to not get on the bus, but instead get a room, freshen up, put on the highest heel she had, which wasn't many. She put on her best smile and moseyed on down to a club called